G'day, welcome to Project Smith Tech. Now, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to subscribe. Today, we are doing a build with the Intel Xeon Platinum P8124. So these are an 18 core part. That's 36 threads or 72 threads all up. And that's gonna be paired with a gigabyte motherboard. More details on that. And we're going with eight gigs each RAM. And we're gonna be pairing all this with a, I'm actually finally introducing the 3090. Just standard 3090, not 3090 Ti. And being that it's a server motherboard, we have our own sound card. And I've actually put another 10 gig card on this. I have shown this card before. I actually have two of these cards. So if any of you have watched my um, True NAS build, that's where the other card is. And that's a spare card that I'm not actually using for the build. And for the cooler, I'm going to Noxio Cooler and I'll actually have a cut just quickly and just go through the price and how much I actually paid for this. And then let's get to the build. All right, let's have a quick glance at the processor. Now, the reason why I'm not going to the Intel um, official site is because the P8124 is basically Intel, it's an off-roadmap CPU and Intel designed it for Jeffrey Bezos. So this is an Amazon um, hand-me-down CPU. So not um, QS sample or anything like that. It's just an off-roadmap CPU. Anyway, we can check out the numbers, clock multiplier, all the instruction sets and some of the other CPUs in the family. Now, this is the, as far as I can tell, the very first CPU that in terms of um, date like 2017 that um, Windows 11 actually officially supports, but not really on the motherboard, but that doesn't matter. All right, the motherboard that I'm using is the MD71 HB0. Go over that just quickly. Um, it is a little bit interesting. So you've got your sim slimline and that's basically your U.2. Um, this gives you a fairly good, um, well, it's actually, yes, it is the actual map of the motherboard with the CPU's um, map, nice. There's a physical motherboard. Again here, U.2 ports, standard SATA, and then you've got your slim SATA connect 12 ports. So yeah, not bad. This is just on eBay. So this is in US. Um, so if you wanted to purchase it, I'd recommend not really, cause like it is an old CPU and like your standard um, AMD, the 7950 should actually outperform this by a small margin. So, but, and this is how much I paid for this system. So I did have the price in AU. I did um, total the amount in the US, but I only put the um, US dollar for the CPU. So everything else, not really that exciting, but yes, it, that is an absolute fortune. And for the performance that you get out of it, no, I'd recommend do not buy on this computer. And just a reminder, this is an off-road map CPU. So off-road map, um, there's going to be very little motherboards out there that will actually support the system. So the motherboard that I just showed you, yes, it is one that does. If you're going to um, try and build a system like this, be very careful with the motherboard. I do know of another one that does support it. And you could pick up a motherboard for a massive 470 US dollars. Uh, some of these um, bundles do actually come with the um, CPU, so it does, oh, these CPUs are 240 watts as well, so Gigabyte let you overrun them a bit on their board, and I've done that with the power test under full CPU load. There's some of these that come with a bundle, which is, which is fine, I guess. There we go, I found one with a bundle. Wow, that's cool, man, but really 800, like you're talking nearly, well, 890 US dollars, it's like, oof, that's a lot of money, I've got to tell you, for, and the performance, in my opinion, just isn't worth it, but we'll get to that anyway. Alrighty, this is just a quick insertion, so if you've planned on following along and you're not deterred by the horrifying price, I'd recommend don't, but anyway, that's up to you. All right, onto the rest of the video. For the thermal paste, I am using the Noctua, well, you can see it on the screen. So this is um, the better thermal paste that I have, and yeah, it's gonna be a bit of an issue. So it's, I don't wanna use my normal um, spatula technique and just scraping it across the CPU because actually too much of this can actually be a performance hindrance. Alrighty. And if you look at here, it actually gives you um, instructions on how to do it with the socket, which is the LGA 36. 47 and that's the one that I've got and I was thinking oh my goodness they do not Recommend that much thermal paste. So I think the beauty of this one is you've got to use as little as possible Yeah, and believe me if a thermal paste um, Well producer says don't use a lot of thermal stat paste and they're the ones that are um, selling the product You might want to pay a bit of tension, but anyway, let's get to it I'm gonna go and I'm gonna actually emulate the dots well, the best I can. Now, before I get to the pacing of the CPU, I thought I'd introduce these novelty pillows. Now, these pillows actually, well, CPU pillows came from Linus Tech Tips, or more specifically, the LTT store. But you'll notice something on what actually comes from a lot of Linus's products is, so if we have a look here, you always get these warnings. And specifically, 
do not drop. Now the reason why I bring this up now, if we if we observe this CPU, this actual family, and when I say the family, I mean specifically the LGA3647, Linus legitimately dropped these. And what I think is quite wild about it is at the time that he dropped it, these were allegedly 10,000 US dollars. Now this, obviously not this specific CPU, and you would know that during the charts that I showed you how much it actually cost but it just it's amazing how something this could be so expensive and now it's actually well reasonably accessible so I personally paid just a little over 900 AU for these and that was a little while ago so I'm sure you can still pick these up on eBay cheap but I would have already explained that if I'm doing the video scheduling correct all right time to actually put thermal paste on these let's go all right so we're gonna do our thermal paste now don't forget the pattern that was Suggested to us. All right, I'm gonna try and emulate it. So I suggested like four P shape dots here. Oops, that might be even too much. Okay, that's one. Well, this is actually a lot harder than it looks three across. And three at the other end. Yeah, that's right. So around there. And what they suggested, maybe I'll turn it this way, that way we can sort of see. So what they suggest, and what I did, absolutely identical. Fantastic. Man, I really hope that's enough. Now this part is absolutely critical. Now I'm gonna go through with it. So how do we mount the CPU? So we've got this plastic shroud. And we're gonna observe. So we've got the triangle. Also got the triangle on the CPU, very small, but that's the way it is. Plastic shroud, the triangle. So in the mounting process, it will go like this. And keep in mind, we want to have the tabs, the big clue here, we want to actually have the tabs up. So the CPU will actually clip on here. And the way to be sure is you have the triangle. So it's going to clip here. And going forward, I believe that probably pacing the CPU once it's actually gone through this step. But nothing I can do about it now. So put it actually in its inserted plastic and then paste the CPU, not the order that I did it in. Whoopsies. Anyway, be careful. And I mean, absolutely careful. Do not contact the pins with the CPU paste. I mean, come on, guys. And that's how that part's gonna go. Then we grab our cooler that we've already um, prepped. So in other words, with some ethanol um, based cleaning and we're gonna place it onto the, well, you see your, your tabs. They're gonna go into the actual fitting. Now your cooler will have instructions on how to do this, assuming that you don't buy from AliExpress. And even then you might be lucky. But and you're going to want to be reasonably firm here. When I say reasonably, I mean because uh, it's actually the CPU cooler that actually bolts onto the motherboard. And there we go. We've mounted our CPU to the cooler, and we should be ready to place it on the motherboard. Now these steps are critical, so I'm going to go through it nice and easy. Therefore, if any of you, for whatever reason, has I'm guessing around nine hundred dollars to spare. I mean, it's not expensive, expensive compared to what they did cost, but. Mm. Okay, now that we have the motherboard, we don't need to worry about the triangle anymore because everything was already set. So we just need to make sure that we put it in the right plate. Now you're gonna see, you're gonna have two rods. Two rods, so if you look carefully at the motherboard, you're gonna have two rods and you're gonna have the stumpier threads. Now, if we observe very carefully, on our CPU cooler, we have the threads on the end. And we're gonna make sure that we line up to each hole correctly. Hopefully you can see, I might actually just give you a better angle because this is actually important. So if any of you are emulating this at your home, I'd really want you to have the exact information that you need. So 
there we go you can see the difference in the rods you can see the threads I might zoom in just a little bit you see zoom that no pins are bent on the motherboard and you're gonna have the little rod all right now that we have the full concept time to actually place the cpu now this is quite a brave step considering that well this is actually quite an expensive system in comparison to the no oh, please don't come in dust i saw a piece of dust fortunately it's just on the cooler my goodness It's having trouble going in, that's all right. Surely a good reason why. All right, and we've got to be careful not to touch the pads and whatnot. All right, let's hopefully this causes me no more problems. Okay, everything seems good right up to this point. So something's really unhappy here. Ooh, we have different size holes. Ah, oh, that's excellent. So you guys observing this, I actually started to put it in the wrong um, way, which is fine. But if we look at the holes, and there's a bigger one here, hopefully you can see that. So if we look at the holes, and we have the smaller one, and we have the bigger one. Now what you saw there was me actually getting it wrong. But fortunately because of the, um, well the way it is, it's, it's only one way. So if you do put it in the wrong way, it's actually virtually impossible. So fortunately we got that sort of before it came any big problem. And these two rods, are different. So once we turn it around to the correct way, it all goes on nicely. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit nerve wracking. Um, well, if you, yeah, you're gonna get it wrong. All right. And everything is good so far. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. What you're going to want to do, your first screws you're going to do up is do on the outside. And you're doing these not very hard. So basically I just nip it. So they recommend um, in the instructions from memory that you put about five Newton meters of torque, which is very, very light. So basically you're just hand tightening these. Then once you do that, then you do the, this is the one that actually compresses the CPU onto the, motherboard oh, to make sure that you get the correct contact with the pins so this part easy enough and once I'm satisfied with that yeah and, and that's all the force I'm using is just a single hand go to the other side and what I do is just hand tighten each one of these so I can see that the thread's going on it's going on correctly there's no um, anything that's going to be detrimental to our Build and yes, the CPU. I did actually blow that out too, and it's still got dust on it. So, so you can see that, no issues. And that side's also well hand tight. So, which I'm gonna just dub the five newton meters of torque, which is I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in foot pounds, but I assume very light. Uh, I think that's a better instruction. Now, for these things, got the spring here. And we're just going to go, I don't know if it's necessarily the correct way, I could be an idiot, but I'm just going to go a little bit on each side until it's fully compressed and then just a tiny nip as well. And that should be enough torque for our um, CPU. Unfortunately, I don't have a good way of filming both sides at the same time. And we're still struggling a bit. So I turned the whole motherboard around. There we go, a bit better there. Now, with all the new server chips coming out, you should actually see an uh, influx in the well on the marketplace with um, older Xeon CPU. So, if you actually have a sensible use for them, which is nothing that I'm definitely not doing anyway, that's for sure. Turn. Um, yeah, you should actually start to pick these up fairly cheap. Turn, and you just do that until you've come to that tight point. Oh. And as you can see there, I've reached the end point. And I don't need to tighten it much more than that. So I'm just... Once it stops turning. Yep, boom. And that's a secured um, cooler. So the cooler actually secures the CPU to the motherboard, which is... Um, yeah, well, that's very interesting though, isn't it? And while I've got this 
angle, I might as well do one of the ram sticks because I will go. Do not use the black um, ram stick. So that's, they're specifically designed for the persistent memory. These CPUs, they're at um, six channel each and that's where the blue comes in. Well, this brand of CPU, I don't know even though if it even supports this uh, memory. So it might be a, um, a different um, Xeon product that you'd have to use if you're going to use the persistent memory, which is basically, um, you can gear this up with this motherboard actually gives you the option of um, having like sort of a RAID where you can actually have the hard drive. So imagine installing the operating system on this, it, there'll be no chipset, very close to the actual CPU. It'd be what I'd imagine very fast, but unfortunately I don't have that to show today, but I do have a 2666, which is the native um, speed for the Xeon processor. And we're just gonna chuck one RAM in. I won't show the whole lot because, well, I have an excessive amount, but it's what we're gonna do. Make sure that the tabs are lined up. I would not recommend this as a first build, so And just a couple of quick clicks. Anyway, that's that part of the um, job done. Okay, now that we've got the two coolers on, all RAM sticks are uh, installed. Quite a beefy motherboard. I wanna to talk to you quickly about the case. Okay, now I obviously have to sit really far away from the case. So this case is the Thermaltake Core WP100. Now they do have a 200 version, which just basically means it is twice as fat and you can put um, two systems in here. I've actually had quite a few systems in this case. So eventually what I was gonna do is um, purchase either more hard drive bays. There seems to be no shortage of them and I would have had cooling. But the only downside to this case is they've gone to absolutely no effort with um, any sound dampening. So this is basically a work case. You either put your water cooling components in here or you can definitely fit a full size server motherboard, which we will definitely go through. And if you want to, you even got more hard drive bays even under here, even though they don't specifically mention. And powering this, we won't be able to see it, but it is the Corsair, because I wanted a reliable um, power supply which is the, I believe it's the 1.3 kilowatts or 13,000 watts, depending on how you. This is my cable management so far. I haven't actually. Nope, only 1200 watts, Ugh, which is fine anyway. Wow, I didn't actually know this because I've had this system running close to a thousand watts so it only let me 200 watts room but that's fine and these like what's in here is like a lot of it's spare parts and whatnot um you got a massive amount of room for radiators if you want to go really custom so there's a really good amount of room um right now it's just a bit of a mess and the reason why i don't do cable management with this is i've just had so many systems in this case including the dual x58 which is i mean it's fine but um, this case is very versatile, so I've never had a build that wasn't able to fit in this. Yeah, I'll get back to you. I suppose it's time for me to put the motherboard in. Oh, actually, before I do that, I need to put on the cool... Oh, for the cooling in this case, I'll quickly go over it. Yeah, so I have uh, three Noctua fans on the bottom. Uh, three Noctua fans that are at 140 mil fans. The back, and I've got three 200 mil fans. And that's just uh, get some of the help with some of the convection. So I've got most of the air, got most of the air coming in from the bottom to the top. Now I've got to stop you moving the phone so much. Sorry guys, if you get motion sickness, it's a, I should actually be putting this on a tripod, but anyway. And plenty of airflow. So I've got plenty of airflow going in from the bottom and it's been spat out by your fan and your top fans. All right, before I do that, it's time for me to put the actual fans on the heat sinks. And for this, these actually came with the products and they have their own brackets, so no real issue there. I don't think it's worthwhile me going through the process of putting that on. I just need to clean that up a little bit more. And my goodness, if you're going to work on a motherboard, um, my suggestion, unlike what I did, is maybe clean up some of the dust a little bit. But anyway, there we go. Nice and clean now. Let's get the fans on. 
Alrighty, now that we've got all the fans and everything else connected, including my Windows 11 drive, I thought I'd just quickly go over the board, maybe take some pictures before I end up putting it all in the case. As a fan, as I got no choice how to mount these coolers, but in typical of all my builds, I have the air going in, air going out. Not much airflow across the RAM. Apart from that, everything's hooked up. Might as well, let's get it in the system. Then I can put the 3090 in. And believe it or not, let's do some gaming and just some light benchmarking and we'll see. All right, let's get in the case. Just before I plug everything in, I thought I'd just show you what the motherboard looks like. Oh yeah, it's a big board and this is a big case. So that's sort of what we're looking at. So fortunately the case is massive. Okay, for the fun part, now connecting your front panels is generally a bit of a pain in normal circumstances, but this is a special motherboard. Now for those who of you who built a computer will know that um, the front panel connectors can be a bit tricky and what you would notice that some people will complain, oh, why don't they just make it one plug? Well, you know that one person that will complain if it was one plug? Well, that's me because I have motherboards like this. So, so when connecting your front panel, I couldn't find any um, labels on the actual motherboard itself. So you're going to have to look up the internet, but you got it here if you want to and just to give you some clarification. It'll be, yeah, okay, my phone. Thank you, phone. Anyway, and that's what you've got to work with. Well, this is system for better or for worse. It's all wired up now. Every single thing I've got the... You have to have your own sound card as well. So I've got the sound card, the 10 gigabit network card, even though the motherboard actually has, well, 10 gigabit on board, but um, because of the weird way the... Because of the gig, gigabyte network manager, it can be tricky to access in a standard operating system. So rather than... Um, I did try and play around with it, but I couldn't get it to work. So I just found it easier just to get a cheap card. Before that, we just go over the back. Cable management, and I promise you, I'm not doing any more than that. The reason why is because, yeah, I do change the system a lot. So if I went for all the effort, I was gonna put something fantastic in here one, one day, you know, have the fill it full of hard drives, put true NAS scale on it, have an operating system that the motherboard was actually meant to run, not Windows 11. And it doesn't actually officially support um, standard Windows. So Windows Server, yes, but, um, yeah, Windows um, Pro, nope. So it will work, but yeah, you're gonna have a l some issues updating occasionally. Okay, you can see the computer working. Just to quickly show you the desktop, what's going on, I've got hyper-threading off, and let's check how much power it's consuming. Okay, so it has been on for a while, so this is actually what I'd consider in an idle state, and it's got a constant draw of 140 watts, essentially. And given the performance, which we're about to go into in the next video, yeah, I would definitely not recommend this system. However, it was fun to build, and hopefully we all got something out of it since, well, in terms of cost and performance, oof. Anyway, Project Smith Tech signing out. Peace.